here we are at Gallery AOP Art on Paper at 44 Stanley Avenue with artist Terry Kurgan, who has turned out um, a surprisingly comprehensive showing, in my opinion, of her work to date, including uh, this, this remarkable hotel Yeovil. And I think that you're going to have to give us the summary um, of how and why uh, you did Hotel Yeovil in the first place. The Hotel Yeovil project grew out of a previous body of work that I'd made in Jibé Park. And straight after that project, I was on a straightforward photographic commission in Yeovil. And I was unbelievably blown away by the suburb of Yeovil, by how many people seem to be from other places, how entrepreneurial, how energetic, um, and how interesting. And it was around about the same time that that terrible xenophobic violence, which started in May 2008, sort of rippled through the country. And I was struck by how, at the same time as the media were full of images of people dispossessed, violence, women with babies on their back and belongings on their head, schlepping off to nowhere or to refugee camps, that at the same time, here was this diverse community of people from other places getting on with their lives and getting on with the ordinary sort of physical and emotional stuff that we all do. And tell us what we're looking at over here. We're looking at a, an array of surprisingly content, healthy-looking, um, engaged individuals. But the, mis the mystery for us as, as viewers is, who are these people? These people are residents of Yeovil who participated in a um, digital interactive exhibition environment that we produced. And what you're looking at here are photographs that were made in what we call the love booth, the photo booth. Now, pink is the color of enduring love. The point of the project was to put a completely different conversation out into the world than the one that was produced by the media, you know, during, before and after the xenophobic violence. Let's move on then to these, these earlier works which, mm. which also concern another preoccupation mm. of yours, which is your family. Yeah. Um, you started taking photographs of your, of your kids, mm. um, as cute as they are, and caused some stir in the art world. Well, there, there were 40 images of my then six-year-old son performing himself, versions of himself, very achingly, I thought, for his mother. And they, in, in at least half the images, he didn't have any clothes on, so there was sort of full frontal nudes. And the, the reason you only see four of these now is I'm hoping that this work, which was so controversial and which people still associate with me, I mean, very often when I meet people for the first time, they say, oh, you're the artist who takes photographs of her children without their clothes on, which, you know, I did once, and it was in 1997, a long time ago, and many bodies of work under the bridge since then. Now, I'm not for everybody vomiting out, you know, all the intimate details of their private lives, but I think there's certain things, like, for example, you know, the intimacy and the sexuality that is part of mother-child, father-child relationships being a public conversation. The park photographers from, from Johannesburg circa now um, are, are frozen in time and we may not see them as serious chroniclers of, of the Johannesburg life but indeed they are and I think you noticed and spotted that and, and took that to heart. I was really interested in how many of their commissioned photographs were never claimed. For me, that somehow you know, emphasized the melancholy of the photographic transaction even more. So I bought their unclaimed photographs from them as if I were their missing client. And that, that was really interesting because the unclaimed photographs gave you a sense of who was in the park in 2005 and who'd been in the park in 1995. And you got an unbelievably clear sense of the shifting demographics of the city of Johannesburg. If we can encapsulate it all uh, through the practice and of course we've seen how performative your work is, um, what have you learned from the themes that you've employed? You know, I called the exhibition Public Art, Private Lives and 
I think that I've learned that there are themes and preoccupations that thread through my body of work. Some of those are about private lives and public culture, how important it is to project a certain kind of intimacy into the public realm in South Africa at this time, you know, to make it a more human place. And at the same time, I've constantly explored representation, like what do images mean? 